Yeah. Archie is sitting down with M1 from underground political hip hop duo Dead Press. M1, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. I want to get started with a topic that you touch upon a lot in your lyrics, and that's corporate ownership of the media in the United States. Sure. Through your eyes, how does that affect what Americans see on TV, and why is that a bad thing? Oftentimes, because the, the, the people who have the most interest in, or the people who are the corporate ownership itself, um, their interests um, conflict directly with where the reality of the majority and the masses of the people are. Now you have this uh, very popular song called Propaganda and there's a sentence in there that reads you can't fool all of the people all of the time but if you fool the right ones the rest will fall behind. Yeah. I want to ask you has that happened and who is f fooling the people? I bet if you if you read in Propaganda 101, you know Media 101, uh, these these words are, are probably ingrained in stone um, because this seems to be the mantra, um, you know, by which you know media was born in this country um, out of a, a kind of deception, um, the the line that has the interest of the ruling class once again, um, the bottom line in media. Um, and, me, and they, meaning fool the people, uh, would mean uh, big government who has interest in uh, making sure that even though bombs are being dropped uh, in, um, in many other countries in the interest of oil and dollars and, and control, that uh, we main, maintain focus on a soap opera type relationship between people uh, whose lives are pretty trivial when it boils down to uh, our basic needs of food, clothes, and shelter um, every day. Well, whose interests are the media more interested in representing in their news coverage? Is it the corporations? Is it the government? Is it, who is it? Who is the main kind of entity the media sleeps with? Well, let's be clear, you know, the media is the right hand of the ruling class. It is the voice of the ruling class in this particular country, of which um, we would say less than 10% uh, own 90% of the wealth and resources. So this arm, this propaganda arm of the ruling class does represent corporation, it does represent government, if there can be government, because the so-called democracy is run by dollars, you know. It is the political campaigns where they spend millions upon millions of dollars, I mean, almost if you think about it, wastefully. So it is the ruling class interest that the media represents in the name of the corporations, um, and America being one of the biggest corporations. In one of your songs you say the Democrats and the Republicans are two sides of the same coin. Does that mean you think that Obama is just a continuation of George Bush? Obama uh, representing capitalism being just a continuation of George Bush is an understatement. Um, you have a, a system which was built off the enslavement of African people to birth, eco birth this economy. It, it, it gave birth to not only what's happening here domestically, but around the world which is what we call today imperialism. George Bush was only a cog in the engine. You have Barack Hussein Obama as also a cog, meaning a small part of the machinery that works the system. The same old kind of a rule that happened across the country is still happening in the same old way, but represented by a face more familiar, a face that is usually associated with the oppressed and poor people. So um, it is important to maintain uh, the, the kind of programs and campaigns, a continuation of even more spending on war is what Obama's doing than what Bush has done in his previous presidency, in his tenure. We have more uh, um, empty promises to the poor and oppressed people, especially the uh, Mexican people who along the borders are being uh, uh, hunted down brutally like animals um, against even the, the basic human rights. Uh, these are promises that Barack Obama and George Bush were able to make to these people in, 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 in an empty way and not come up with any solutions and yet and still the same practice happens today, if not in a more exacerbated fashion. I want to talk to you about the events in Egypt, the poverty of the people that led to these uprisings. Do you think the U.S. political elite should be fearful that something similar could come here? I think the conditions are ripe for there to be uprisings in the same manner because the same set of conditions that existed in Cairo, exist in New York City, exist in Miami, Florida, exist in Los Angeles. You have a ruling class with an abuse of power. I was recently in Cairo, uh, and I was there on a humanitarian aid mission to help the people in Gaza. 
in order for us to get to Gaza, we had to jump through so much bureaucracy. And we began to understand that not only did Egypt's government, was it controlled by bureaucratic politicians in Egypt, but Israel had a huge stake in making sure that the, the, the state of Egypt was the way that it was, maintained. Um, you're saying that's the situation. And that is definitely the situation in the streets. Look at what we have inside the United States. We have young African, black and brown uh, subjects, uh, community, colonial subjects being shot down in the street in an obsessive kind of way. 50 shots, 60 shots, laying on our stomach, in our back, as we run or as we walk or flee in retreat from the scene. This is an abuse of power, which is a powder keg upon which we're sitting on. And we've discussed our, already the jobless rate, We've discussed already the idea that there's a crisis even in the ideology of America and who wouldn't be the next to lead. So there is an, uh, a, a competition about that happening as well and people are, 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 are charged. People are charged and, and are waiting to jump into action. I want to talk to you about, you mentioned a little bit of the issue of police brutality. How big is the scope through your eyes? Police terror is an instrument of the state used to coerce young people. It's a fear mechanism, but the police state is the control of the resources. It's control of healthcare, the stifling of education, the um, current situation of, uh, of the economy, um, the, the governing, uh, the legislation and us not being able to put policy, real policy that's meaningful into people's lives that make it make sense uh, so that we can our, our daily lives are affected. This is police state and the police are just instruments and coercion of the state. So does the military play, to play a part. There are so many ways that the police state is implemented. You've said that the ruling elite is one of the bigger problems as to why, you know, the working class is in trouble and really struggling right now. And you have a song called Know Your Enemy. Who is the main enemy of the common American people? Our main enemy is ignorance, not a proper political education. This is the enemy of our people because once we can understand, diagnose what we're living under, all human beings who recognize that me and you have human rights will fight for the rights of human beings. The way we are being governed now treats uh, a good sector of our people less than human, less than human in this country. Nothing short of revolution, but there's so many steps. There's so many steps in empowerment of our people. And the enemy out of this particular time that we're in is lack of information and political education. I want to switch gears actually a little bit and ask you about the way the United States interacts with other countries. Do you think the U.S. has too much power over other countries or tries to have too much power and really getting in the affairs and the businesses of other nations out there who deserve to make their own decisions? What's your take on this kind of foreign policy exchange that goes on nowadays? Power is he who controls imperialism. The belly of imperialism is born at the birth of capitalism in this country through the enslavement of Africa and its resources, which are still being siphoned out of Africa and into the world today, despite the world media tirade against Africa, portraying it as this third world place to be. This has been the number one place that people have been uh, siphoning resources from for 500 years. Power uh, comes from the bar barrel of a gun. And so as many bombs as they can point at whatever foreign country that it plans to control is, is, is readiness and willingness to take this area. I don't know, I care if it's Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, um, um, Palestine, um, Somalia, um, Darfur, Darfur um, South Africa, um, Venezuela, um, Colombia, um, many places in Mexico, we see the same tentacles of U.S. domination um, because of its ability to have its power base here, the birth of its strength in capitalism, and then the defense of it using mi military might around the world. And Juan, thank you for your time with us. Thank you.